Hey everyone. So I wanted to come on today and start this Q&A type thing that I want to start doing just on the sole basis that I get so many questions and I want to answer all of them and I think when I answer them individually it's um, more personable but I know that a lot of the questions that people are asking other people want to know the same things and that if I can respond in a way that reaches more people, um, that would be better and more efficient. So I'm um, going to start doing Q&A. So if you have any questions, you can either leave them in the comments of my videos or send me an email at emanateyoursource.gmail. And um, also my website, there's ways to get a hold of me on there as well. And below... In the information below this video so I had somebody ask me a question and I thought I definitely have to come on and answer this for the purpose of a lot of people will be able to relate to it and the second purpose is something that I somewhat went through and so I have experience and I want to be able to share my um, perspective based off of being somebody who has experienced it as well so the question came in and the gentleman asked, what happens if while you're married, you realize you're genuinely in love with someone else? It's obviously wrong considering both parties are married. Is this feeling temporary? Okay, so first thing you need to realize <laughs> is that if you're in a relationship, a marriage, what have you, and you feel like you're drawn in another place to another person, um, you're not satisfied and happy and joyful in your circumstances and you know that there are factors in that environment that um, are the reason why you feel that way well you gravitating towards somebody else this has nothing to do with you being in love with somebody else or them in love with you and pulling you out of a relationship this has everything to do with your higher self telling you this situation isn't right for me this situation is situation is alright for me. Something's not right here. I'm not in vibrational alignment with where I'm at. And it making me feel insanely uncomfortable to the point where I feel like I need to reach out and find and fill these voids I'm feeling with someone else, something else. Okay? So it's your higher self screaming, make changes. So when we, all we do is focus on like, oh, the, it's two people who are, you know, doing something wrong according to the status quo, according to what our culture says is right or wrong. Nothing is right or wrong, you know. Um, it's all perspective. So, so what the question you need to ask yourself is what is this bringing up in me? What is look at this situation as a whole what is this bringing up in me and it should be a list of things that you could list out and ask yourself what is this bringing up in me and then you want to ask yourself how you plan on addressing it so a lot of these changes are big and scary <laughs> if you truly follow your heart you know and I think that's when people get have a spiritual awakening that's what they run into they run into these huge roadblocks that they've in these cycles that they've been stuck in and now the universe has asked you do you have the faith and the courage to do something about it to do something for the sake of your highest good so I mean in my circumstance when I met my person or when I met an individual I was somewhat in this circumstance, but I was already like separated out of my marriage, but like my divorce wasn't final. You know what I mean? So I had already been not physically involved or in a relationship, you could say, with my husband for, it was probably like eight to 10 months before this happened. So it's not the exact same situation in this question, but I understand where they're coming from because it's somewhat similar. And the only thing that you can really do here is ask yourself why are you staying in a situation that doesn't make you happy for me it was my kids you know and for a lot of people it's their kids or like financial security and so for me I had to ask myself 
what can I do to be the best parent I can be? And, and I just couldn't wrap my head around staying in a situation, in a relationship, in an environment that wasn't conducive to me being my best self, therefore being able to be the best parent I can be. Because if I'm not my best self, I can't be the best parent. I can't be uh, the best employee. I can't be my best me in any aspect as in a relationship with my own mother or father or family or a friend or you you're giving everybody like you with the half the glass half full like you're not able to really truly give in this world and that's why we come here we come here to just experience happiness and love and give that to others and be a part and like as human beings we want to be a part of this community but we're so divided in our culture now and it's all these um ways that we are mentally manipulated and into thinking what's right and what's wrong and and putting other people before ourselves um people pleasing and then not re and then just draining ourselves of energy and happiness because we are so uh, we have ex chronic anxiety in our culture i mean the list goes on we all know that these things exist but the question is every moment you have a choice every moment you have a choice to perceive anything in any particular way that you want and when you when you continue to choose um the i can't leave this job i'm dependent on this job i can't leave this relationship because my religion tells me that i'm i'm supposed to stay <laughs> it's this is it when you get married one time and that's it because i can't leave this because of my kids i can't leave this because of whatever when you get to that space you really have to think what is of the highest good of all involved here? What is the highest good of me? What is the highest good of my children? What is the high in the highest good of it, like in terms of like a job? Like is the money worth the stress? Is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to every single day wake up and throughout the week spend more time doing something that you dislike than doing things that you do like what do I even like and and that's the the worst part of the whole like cultural conditioning is that people don't even know what who they are therefore they don't know what their passion is they don't even know what to pursue what is their life path to even like get on that road of being able to like leave that nine to five job that you hate and you spend majority of your time in and like creating a career around something that you're passionate about because the future is an entrepreneurship like the future and in generations after we pass like the future is entrepreneurship everybody's gonna hop in and do what they love doing you love to build houses you love to be an electrician you love to know whatever there's a million different there's nothing that you can be passionate about that you can't make into a career try me leave something in the comments i'll guarantee you i could think of a way to make a career out of it like it's just we are just in these mental boxes of like prisons we're in like a marriage that feels like a prison. We're in a career that feels like a prison. We're in like a community whose um, closed mindedness makes it feel like a prison. Like we have to be a certain way or operate in a certain way. And it's so crippling. It's insanely crippling. So are we going to let fears fears of change because we're in our little comfort zone change is change is often associated with fear in our culture because the monotony of just having living the same day every day going to the same job doing the same things eating the same foods like all that kind of stuff like we get comfortable because we know what's going to happen we like to know what to expect and like in order to live in the moment and be on a moment-to-moment -moment basis 
you have to release expectations. You have to like flow with the universe and trust God in the universe has is going to, if you follow your intuition and you follow that guidance, is going to lead you on the path that is the best for you, that is of your highest good. So we just have that have that faith and that courage to make the change. And trust me, from somebody who's made a lot of big changes on this journey, and, and it's scary. What will people think of me? Like, will I be able to make it financially? Like, all these things. If you have that faith, like, the universe will provide you. And you have to know that. Know that the universe will provide that support you need, that that new job you need, or new passion or career that you need, that new love and relationship, if you want that. Like, whatever you want is possible. The only thing that is holding you back is you and what the way you perceive your life and your potential. Do you believe that you can do something? So most of the issues that come up are self-worth issues. People don't really believe they can do it. People don't really believe they could survive if they went out and tried to create a career for themselves. And I know like this person's, I went off on a huge tangent from the question, but it all comes back to what are you going to do about you? Because you are the one that creates your own reality. Are you creating a, re a reality that's, in, that's conducive to you being your best you? Because when you do that, everything else just falls into place and it feels effortless. But you have to trust. You have to stop people pleasing. You have to stop caring what people think. You have to stop trying to control every outcome. You have to be able to willing to make a plan but be malleable and go outside of that plan if need be. You have to be consistently conscious of everything you're thinking, every action you make, be the observer, try to see where you're, where you're, you could improve and make those improvements. There's a lot of people stuck in, they don't see their own shit. That's huge. If you don't see your own stuff, then how can you grow? Because you aren't even aware of the fact of where you need to grow from. Nobody is completely healed. No human being. We're human beings in a 3D reality. Like no matter if you tap into 4D or 5D or whatever dimension, you're still a human being. You still have to live this life. You still have to experience contrast. You still will have things that you need to heal. That's why we came here to heal and then show others how to, and then live in harmony. But we've strayed, our entire culture for thousands of years has strayed off this path and we're bringing it back in. That's what 2012 was. It was the, the, the finally the hundredth monkey effect, like pushing us in to raising the consciousness on earth. So the question is, is are we going to see our own stuff, be, have the faith and the courage and be willing to change and make these changes and stop being scared and living in fear? So I hope that helps you guys. It's pretty much a universal thing. I don't think that doesn't apply to anyone. We've all been stuck. We've all been in a cycle and just keep repeating the cycle and it keeps coming up in different ways and different scenarios in our life. And we keep getting allotted another opportunity to make choose a different perspective that serves our highest good. And are we going to? Or are we going to let our ego take hold and take the reins and react the way we always react? I never have enough money. There's never enough. Why is this always happening to me? I can't help it. I'm stuck in this marriage. Look at all my kids. I can't just leave. I can't just leave. Like, what will I do about money? How, like, I got to go through an entire divorce process. I, court gives me anxiety. Like, the list goes on of reasons <laughs> to say, no, I don't want to make a change. And all it is is fear. That's all it is. It's your ego taking the reins and then you sinking into fear and then you sit back into your comfort zone and repeat your little cycle. So... 
if you guys have any more questions that you want to ask, I hope that helps somebody out there because I, I really felt like the universe brought that particular question to the surface in order to have this conversation because it needs to be had. So any other questions you guys can put down below or shoot me an email, all that information is below. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, just search Kelsey Franks. I always pop right up. Also, my services are available on my website, um, KelseyFranks.com. Right now, I have email coaching available. So if you're interested, um, head on over there. And I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day.